Well, I'd like to welcome Golf Psychic viewers to the channel. I've been watching him since almost the beginning of his channel. Now we might not be on the same page, but I feel that we are in the same hymn book. So on a par four like this, you've got to ask yourself, what benefit is there in getting really close to the green, taking a big risk? Is there any? A three-tiered green, flags in the middle as usual, got to find the correct tier. But if you watch the front nine you'll see that my swing is out of shape this evening. So that's short and I've come back off the front. When your game's a little bit crooked then you need to bring your imagination. This is as important as a 300 yard drive. It counts exactly the same, so get it right. Our shortest par three, playing quite short today, the tee's forward. It's narrow at the front and fat at the back, so we go for the fat at the back. That'll be the, the fat bit, Simon, that bit over there on the left. Now if you don't know me, my name is Simon, I'm 5 foot 5 inches tall, I'm 57 years old and I'm clinging desperately to a 5 stroke 6 handicap. Now the hardest hole on the course, what makes this so hard? It's a steep dog leg to the right, as soon as this ball finds the fairway it's getting further and further away from the green. And then you're left with an uphill shot off an upslope and it's a bit of a bugger. Well, no matter how bad your hole has been, there's always a shot to be saved if we can focus in on a three-footer across a slope. Right, another short par four. A really good birdie chance. I make a lot of birdies here. But if the birdies aren't happening, you can't force it. Just keep doing what you're doing. Wait for them to happen. You may not get a single birdie in a round. But if you try pushing for one, you might just reach for a bogey instead. See, the thing with that choice is I don't have to hit it hard. You hit it hard with a wedge. Hit it hard. See, the thing with that choice is I don't have to hit it hard. When you're on an upslope like this and there's a lot of wind up there, you hit a wedge hard, you put a ton of backspin on it, it just climbs, it goes nowhere, it's out of control. For me, this is in control. Being able to take extra club when it's windy like this and keeping your wedges under control is a skill well worth having. Uh, so is putting. <laughs> oh 
almost hit the stick there. Yeah, this has got to be the most peculiar hole anywhere, possibly anywhere in the world. Somewhere over that ridge, there's a tennis court area that's reasonably flat. That's what I go for, because I don't want one of those hitting a wedge off a slope like that. So, five wood from here, spank the ladyboy, and the tee's right at the front of the box. Well, I found the flat part. As you can see, beyond and to the left of me, the ball would have run off the side of the planet, and then I really would have been left with a horrible wedge shot. It's just a shame that I hit that one fat. Simple chip and run. Should be able to get my par. Well, I say should, but I overhit that one. So sometimes you've got to just take the bogey and run. Well, it's late in the evening and there's going to be some dark pitches from now on on one or two holes. Nothing I can do about it playing after work. You know, breaking 80 requires a little bit of being honest with yourself over what you can and cannot do. This lie is not great, but it is on a little bit of an upslope. 198 to a back flag. I think the ball's going to come out of here pretty dead. So I'm going five wood, and uh, we're going to give it a go up the right hand side keep well away from that bunker. Sixteen, we turn around, come back, heading for home. So we got all of those undulations to come, but coming back in the opposite direction. And a decent drive here will actually feed off the fairway and into this light rough. But get your clubbing right, the green's a bit of a bowl, and you've actually got a chance. I'm glad I wore this shirt, otherwise you wouldn't be able to see me at all. But just like you, I play a lot of golf in the evening after work. Patience eventually pays off. Number 17, the par 3, water right, sand left and a dirty great big slope. So when you've got a slope like this, it doesn't have to be a par three, but you can use it to get your ball back to the green. Go on, go on. Go on. Well, if you've watched this far, thank you. This is Lilybrook, just outside Cheltenham. It's 6,221 yards, par 69. The only par five is a bit awkward, as you've seen, especially with the way I was driving it tonight. Now, one thing you may have noticed, I've probably only used this seven times tonight. The 12th there, for instance, if there wasn't any wind about, I'd normally hit three wood. 
that would have got me in a, in a decent enough position. So I've only used the driver one extra because of the wind. Now I'm not telling you not to use your driver, but what I'd like to suggest is that you look out at your fairway and the trouble left and right and sometimes put this away, get off the gas, hit your three wood, hit your five wood, without of course compromising your ability to break 80. Very steeply downhill, dogleg right, over the trees, over the outer bounds. I like to try and hit a fade. Sadly, that one is just too straight. When it's too straight, you run out of space. But there is a reward for hitting the perfect shot. Here's my reward for hitting the perfect shot. Thanks for watching. Cheerio.